Hello and welcome to the video. This is a flight review video and kind of a feature overview of this thing here. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you have already seen, I've done a video about this already, going through some of the specs. This is the higher hand, not sure if that's how you say it, Firefly. This is a slightly unusual design. It has all the components down here. So we have room for a battery, a gimbal at the front, flight controller and stuff at the back. On the top, we have a GPS, no compass sadly. And the motor is here at the front, stuck out here on this pylon. Running Ardu Pilot, and it comes with quite a funky little controller. This is actually a rebadged H12 Pro, and that allows you to control everything, but also get footage from the gimbal and control the gimbal while you're flying around. Now, there have been a number of reasons why it's taken me as long as it has to get a flight video out for this. The main one is, is that this is a pre-production unit. It's not designed to be a final version. This is one that was shipped. And the way it tends to work is that the manufacturers will set up the production line, run the production line for a little bit of time, see how it goes. Uh, if those initial versions of the production line are good enough, then they will ship them to people like me to review them and show them on places like YouTube. However, there is a massive danger with that. The big danger is it's shipped with incomplete firmware and settings. So if you immediately then try and do a flight review video, which I know some people already have, you're not actually showing the people who might be interested in this what it's actually going to be like if they buy it. It might be that you're showing some features that the manufacturer turn off because they can't get them working properly. Or it might be that you show problems that aren't problems because those have been resolved with firmware and settings changes. And there have been a number of things that have changed since this was shipped to me. Updates to the gimbal, updates to the firmware, updates to the default trim positions. I haven't changed anything with the exception of one thing. I've changed it so that I can shake to wake it, so that I can just shake the model like that. The prop will start, will ramp up over a couple of seconds and then I can throw it. But I thought now this is as customers will buy it, it's worthwhile me actually doing a video showing you what it's all about. So I'm going to very quickly go through this. I'll put time codes down below for the main stuff. Again, I'll put a link to the original video if you want to look at the specs in some kind of detail. First thing it's worthwhile doing is showing you how easy this thing is to put together. Again, it comes in this beautiful box, which keeps it nice and safe. Take the wings out, they're gonna snap into position. Take out the radio. I would turn it on at this point, but if it does take a while to boot, I'll go through the radio and the settings and apps on there in a moment. The wings just clip home. All the electrical connections are made, so there's no problems at all. They come off in exactly the same way with that thumb latch. Then it's a case of pulling out the vertical stabilizer with the rudder and the other part of the tail. This is the only bit that takes any time at all. There's this thumb screw here that you have to take off. The vertical stabilizer slots in position, goes over the surfboard at the back, and then it's just a case of screwing the thumb screw in. Be careful, don't do it this way because this will mean that you have to screw the whole thing in. I'm going the wrong way around. Do it from the other side that you took it out from and then you're just screwing in the five or six threads at the end. Once that's all together, then it's just a case of sliding it home. It is keyed so that you can't get the wrong way around and doing up the collet. Once that's done, it's all together. You can put this thing together in less than a minute and much quicker with a little bit of practice. So let me go through the remote a little bit. Obviously this is a slightly more sophisticated remote than some of us fly because it has kind of an Android tablet in it. Again, this is the H12 Pro is actually what this is. And it's an Android system on here is Q ground control, uh, something called Fly GCS, which is actually a great app if you're in China, not great if you're outside of it. And also the gimbal stuff too. While this is booting up, let me show you very quickly. There are three position switches on the corners. They control your modes. We have a couple of rotating controls. They control the gimbal position. And we have these extra buttons around here, one of which is for return to home. The other is for a launch mode. Now it does take a second to start up. So we'll let that finish. While it's finishing, I will plug in the model so it can power up. So now we are connected and we've got the confirmation beeps. You can see the different apps on the screen. These are the ones that are here by default. I understand that Fly GCS is going to be replaced. So if I go into the gimbal app, we can get a view out of the gimbal. So there we are looking at the GoPro. I can using the 
controls look up and down I can also then look left and right I can look directly down if I want to onto the desk I can go back to the center position so that's how all of those pieces work however that's not really what how you want to fly it what you really want to fly it with is you want to fly it with fly GCS now there is Q ground control on here as well Q ground control is handier for getting into the settings if you want to change stuff however to actually fly it with at the moment they recommend that you use fly GCS again this is one of those apps that's probably better if you are in China because I've tried to become a member of it it won't let me because i'm outside of china and also the the final versions so we can either have the image with the map in the left hand corner or we can have the map on the main screen with the image on the left hand corner so if i get rid of that piece then i can get to the gimbal stuff so there we are we can look down we can look straight up but we can also start and stop recording from here as well and that's going to be saved on the sd card pressing this button here will arm the model I'm not going to do that now obviously i'm inside but when i arm the model then we're going to be ready so the three flight modes that it comes standard as are either in the middle position fly by wire a or fluor as she calls it which is hilarious then we have return to home Rirtle, and then we have auto tune so we're going to want it in fly-by-wire A and then the other thing we're going to want is uh, what these two buttons do so this is the return to launch and this one over here is launch mode so that's how you set this up that's how you use everything it don't have to bind anything everything is on here already um, hopefully like I said there will be some slightly better apps in the future but this will be fine for flying just means I can't have things like the artificial horizon and some of the other information on the screen or if I want to control the gimbal as well so at the field it's all been powered up I've pressed the arming button then a little window comes up that you have to press and hold in order to arm it so it's now armed we have a 3d lock so i'm going to put it into auto launch mode give it a little flick the motor will start up over two seconds throw it and away it goes into the sky and i'm getting video on the radio now the only issue is is because this is a particularly bright day there is a fantastic amount of clarity from the screen i've turned the brightness up but even then on a really bright day you can struggle to see it in terms of the flight, putting it about 50% throttle, this thing is flying incredibly stably. And you'd expect that. This is Ardu Pilot, and this is fly-by-wire A mode. You can fly around and have a very, very relaxing time, and you can take your hands off the sticks, and it's just going to fly straight and level. And by looking at the screen, you can have that real-time view. Now, sadly, in the flights that I've done, it doesn't seem to be saving the files for the video in anywhere that I can get. So do check the very latest and greatest versions of the stuff that you get if you buy one of these, where those video files are going to be stored on the radio. But the video itself is a little bit jerky, although the gimbal is being stabilized that image that's coming down isn't the super smooth image that you see in things like youtube videos it's a little bit jerky so just be aware of that if you're expecting a smooth and clean fpv low lag beautiful hd image on the screen that isn't kind of what you're getting what you're getting is kind of a, a, a laggy step-by-step -step video that isn't kind of keeping up but it does mean that you can look around. You do have to be aware that if you look to the extreme right, left and up, you do see the cowling that's around the gimbal, but you can very clearly see the ground and get a fantastic view over the countryside. Is it video that you're going to use on YouTube to excite and impress your friends? No, but I don't think that's who this model is aimed at. I think it's more aimed at those who don't want to build their own models and things like this H12 Pro are very popular with people like farmers in China. And what they're trying to do here is give a very, very smooth flying experience. So if you had lost some cattle or you want to check where your sheep are, this is a great way to do it. You can throw this up and then have a look at the screen and by taking your hands off the sticks, it isn't going to crash. 
So the way that's set up makes an awful lot of sense, and it is incredibly easy to fly, thanks to the way the radio and Ardu pilot is set up. So they've done a good job with this. Again, I can take my hands off the sticks, and it just flies pretty straight and level, even with a little bit of wind. The noise itself is relatively low. This is a large, relatively slow prop, which means it's good for efficiency. This is going to be flying for kind of 30, 40 minutes without too much trouble at all. And be aware that the roll is limited. It's limited because the gimbal has a limited amount of stabilization that it can do. And what they've done is they've limited the roll so that you can never get in a situation where the gimbal is going to be pushed past its limits. Now that does mean that the turns are relatively lazy turns, but if you use the rudder, that will definitely help. This is just incredibly relaxing and easy to fly, and it's clear that this package is aimed at those who just want that DJI style of experience where they unpack it, they take it to the field, they plug the battery in after it's been charged, and everything's kind of set up out the box. I think for those who really want an FPV experience, there is that additional canopy that you can put some proper FPV gear on, and I think that would probably make it a little bit more exciting for those of us that like to fly FPV. But I don't think that's who this is aimed at. You can move the gimbal around, so if you wanted to fly around and find out where your lost sheep or cows had gone, this would be a fab way of doing it. Bringing it into land, it is capable of going relatively slowly. Obviously, the big thing you have to be careful of is where you're going to bring this in. I had a couple of attempts just to see how well it behaved and had an approach, first of all, and this approach was nice and slow, and it will float despite its relatively large size and weight. It does a great job of just poodling along. You can cut the motor and it will continue to float around. So I had this attempt here, where I'm just gonna kind of fly past myself, and then we had a go around, throttling up, pulling back on the elevator, and it rises nicely into the sky. But do think about where you're gonna land this before you throw it. It doesn't have any landing gear, it's going to belly land. There isn't any protection on the belly against sharp stones and sticks. And also that gimbal, although it is housed in that protective cover, is relatively vulnerable to things like hitting the edge of a fence or a edge of a brick or something or even a curb so really think about where you're going to come into land and plan that before you throw it so that you don't damage the gimbal so here we are on the final approach of this flight as you can see it's going to just flop into the ground and it's down and it's safe so there we have it that's an overview and flight of this thing here couple of things to be aware of as I've already covered in the flight segment but I think the main thing is is to think about who this is going to be aimed at. This I think is aimed at those people who don't want to do what a lot of the things that I do on the channel are about which is building your own plane, sticking in your own flight controller, setting up Ardu Pilot, doing all the tuning, trimming, setup, radio control, binding, all those things that I actually quite like doing, this isn't for those kind of pilots. This is more for the people who want to buy something and have a more DJI style experience. And what I mean by that is that they don't have to do anything. Everything they need comes in the box. It's ready to go and it's set up so that a relatively novice pilot can fly it without crashing. And this does do that. But the big thing that's holding it back at the moment, that Fly GCS app, I think definitely needs an update. Outside of China, it doesn't work particularly well. And the other thing that I really think they need, and I fed this back and they are working on it, there's no manuals in that box. It needs a proper manual to explain how to actually fly this thing, how to recalibrate stuff if you need to, but also there needs to be a quick start guide. What you need to do to be able to get this thing together and fly it successfully the very first time. And hopefully that's on the way because when that's there, I think this would give a pilot a semi DJI style experience by having everything in that beautiful box, pulling it apart and putting it all together. So that is it. If you have any questions or anything, do let me know. I'm going to keep this around because actually it's useful to have an Ardu pilot plane. I need to do an updated video on things like the shake to weight launch. It's changed since I did that video with Ben four years ago. So stay tuned for that. But if you do have any questions, pop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.